Hey guys, for the last couple weeks I've been messing around with ColorFab HT, it stands for high temperature, and if you need to print things that need to be, well, temperature resistant up to 100 degrees Celsius and especially tough, this material is really impressive. Um, I went through a lot of test prints and a lot of tinkering to get it to print well on my Ultimaker 2 Plus. Let me share that with you. Are you ready? Let's do this. Hey guys, welcome back. Well, first of all, welcome to Where Nerdy is Cool. My name is Paul. This is my YouTube channel where I cover all my many fun, well, interesting projects. 3D printing, BB-8 building, R2-D2 building, I could go on and on, but you get the idea. If this is your first time here, welcome. I encourage you to become a subscriber, hit the button in the corner and become one. Don't want you to miss any of my cool videos. If you already are a subscriber, welcome back, good to see you. So ColorFab HT, why in the world would you use something like ColorFab HT? Well, first of all, as I mentioned, the high temperature. It can stand up to 100 degrees Celsius. So if you're familiar with printing with PLA and PETG or even ColorFab Engine, most of those materials are gonna start to you know, get real soft on you around 85 degrees Celsius. With this stuff being 100 degrees Celsius, I thought, well, this is gonna be good because I've been having a real problem with some of my part cooling fan ducts because they sit so close to the hot end. And even though the hot end has a silicone sock on there, eh, they were still having a hard time, you know, <laughs> staying in shape, being so close to such a heat source. So I gave HT a try. So one great resource is from the manufacturer. ColorFab has a website dedicated to how to print with HT, and they give you a lot of information, for example, the printing temperature range, uh, the heated bed temperature they recommend, uh, the retraction distance, retraction speed, and they, uh, they also cite a couple of uh, uh, printers, for example, the Ultimaker, the Lulzbot, and a few others, uh, as starting points on fine-tuning your print settings so you can use this material. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, part cooling fan ducts around. Uh, that's what I wanted to print with this stuff because the project I'm working on, I have an E3D V6 setup, and I wanted to make sure that if I'm printing this guy out in the right material, I don't have to worry about this thing falling apart or getting soft in the future. So that was the goal. And the first print came out pretty good. There was a little bit of stringing and there was a couple thoughts that went through my mind. I could leave well enough alone, use the heat gun, and that would melt away those little tiny strings. I mean, just like PETG or any other copolyester, this would be considered normal and an excellent print but I wanted to see if I could do a little bit better. So what I did is I increased the retraction distance a little bit, did the print again, and even though a lot of the strings went away, there were a few there that were still present. And again, using the heat gun, this will all go away and look perfectly fine, but I was up for the challenge. So having done those two prints, I felt like, okay, I think I got this material pretty well dialed in. Why not do a Benji? So I did a Benchy, and for reference, what I was doing is I was printing the first layer at 257C, and then the second layer beyond that was gonna be 255, and the heated bed was at 110 degrees Celsius. And the first print, as you can see, it looks like at first glance that it came out really well, it did a really good job of bridging, and as I started to look at the print, I started to realize that this looks a tad bit over extruded. Not much, but I mean, still really good. So I did the extrusion multiplier at a lower temperature. I did it at 251 Celsius. And I noticed that when I did that extrusion multiplier uh, test cube, it looked great. It looked fantastic. I did the measurements, no changes needed. Okay, so then we did a second Benchy. Again, the first layer was 255. Then after that, we cooled it off down to 251 Celsius. And as you can see, it came out really, really good. I mean, if anything, it's so good, you can see the salmon skin effect from the Ultimaker 2 uh, Allegro drivers. I mean, that printer came out in 2013. Those drivers are six years old, so you just have to live with that. But still, when you compare it side by side, I mean, it's a really, these prints are excellent, and I was really surprised how well it did with the bridging. Because with the uh, print duct, there's a lot of open area that it's going across, and it did a really good job. Now, the other thing we want to mention when you're dealing with a high temperature material, one of the variables that can be a little iffy is cooling. So what I found is that for something as complicated as the Benchy and the uh, part cooling duct, 
I set the cooling to 25% and that seemed to be the magic number. I was, when I was doing research for this, I saw a lot of posts on Reddit and other places and it seemed like, you know, somewhere between, you know, 25 and 40% seemed to be the magic number on various printers. And of course, every printer has different, uh, you know, fans of different power or CFM, you know, cubic feet per minute and stuff like that. But 25% for me was the magic number. The other thing worth mentioning is that when you're printing with a high temperature material, especially if it's uh, the heated bed has to be over 100 degrees Celsius, um, definitely if you have an enclosure, that works out very well. The Ultimaker 2 is, you know, it's closed off on three sides. So I just put a piece of cardboard on the front. Actually, it was, the, it was part of the cardboard that came with the extruder upgrade kit. And uh, I used that, just taped it over, and uh, that worked out very well for keeping the drafts out and keeping the temperature in. All right, so a short video on ColorFab HT. I, like I said, when I was first looking around for videos online, I didn't see a lot of detailed videos about using it, working with it, and, and some information or guidance. So I wanted to throw this video together just to let you guys know that on an Ultimaker 2, these are the temperatures that worked for me, and links to the website, for example, for ht.colorfab.com, which will give you even more information on how to work with this material and how to print with it. So let me know what you think of the video in the comment section below. I love your feedback. You can also reach out to me on social media, on Facebook, where Nerdy is Cool, Instagram, where Nerdy is Cool, on Twitter, where Nerdy Cool, had to abbreviate to fit, and of course, where Nerdy is Cool.com. As always, I thank you guys for watching. If you want to help me and my channel out, there are two ways you can do so. In the description below, there's a link for the PayPal link. And what you can do is you can click on that and throw me a donation. And hey, that helps me with the supplies and materials, cameras, and well, all this neat stuff you see in the background. Or if you want to become a Patreon, well, I'm on there too. Patreon.com forward slash where nerdy is cool. I thank you guys for watching. I appreciate your feedback, your support, and well, until next time, as always, remember, this is where nerdy is cool. Stay nerdy, guys. Perfect. Between the cats and me not talking, this is going very well. On the ColorFab website, they have learned. Uh, uh, I can't even think what they call it. <laughs>